Good afternoon. Welcome to our first in a series of presentation geared towards those students preparing for the CXC subjects of maths and accounts. It is brought to you by Edu Unlimited, that is Education Unlimited, and the presenter will be yours truly, Roman Lewis. But you might ask the question, who is Rowan Lewis and what is Edu Unlimited? Rowan Lewis is a certified teacher who has been teaching in central Jamaica for over 15 years. I have taught at all three levels, the primary level of the educational system, the secondary level and the tertiary level. At the tertiary level, I taught the associate degree courses of economics, accounting, financial management, calculus, college algebra. And at the secondary level, I taught a number of business subjects, including accounting, and I also taught maths. At the primary level, I tutored a number of students for the GSAT examinations, and the passes were tremendous. Passes were to prominent high school in Kingston and the corporate area and in central Jamaica. I even tutored a number of these students who moved on to these high schools at the CSEC level and tutored them while they were in college and some were at universities. And so Edu Unlimited is the online platform of the brainchild of Rowan Lewis. It is a global or it will be a global marketing solution. And so in the future, we will have classes in associate degree courses, undergrad courses, and graduate degree courses. We begin our first class. I ask that you will hit that subscribe button and you can wait until the end, but don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Don't be afraid to like and share these series of presentations. So our first topic will be on the accounting topic called introduction to account or introduction to accounting. And in this video, we will lay the foundation of accounting and some might ask a question what is accounting why am i doing accounting the truth is accounting or accounts is something that we do every day it's a real life situation and so from time to time we will balance our personal budget we will be prepare preparing ourselves to take a loan from a financial institution probably it's a mortgage and so we'll have to revisit our budget we'll have to recheck our budget we'll have to recalculate our budget we need to analyze and calculate how much we spend on education how much we spend on transportation how much we spend on food how much we spend on clothing and so on and so forth additionally accounting is something that persons do on a professional basis and so we have bookkeepers we have accountants that work in large conglomerates some might be working in a small business so accounting is something that we do on a daily basis accounting is not only about money we can give an account for stock but at the end of the day the stock values something so it has a monetary value and so According to Woods and Sangster, 2005, as we look at this first slide on page 30, uh, Woods and Sangster defines accounting as the process of identifying, measuring, and communicating economic information to permit informed judgment and decisions by users of the information. And so let us break down this definition so that uh, the online students can have a clearer picture of what accounting is. And so accounting, first of all, is a process. It's a process of identifying the different elements that will be in the accounting. 
and then once we identify this process we will need to measure and last but by no means least accounting must be communicated to someone or an institution and so the information in accounting helps us to make an informed judgment we are not making a judgment blindly but we are making it on calculations we're making it on measuring we're making it on reporting we move on to our second slide we will broaden scope of accounting so we widen the scope so it's a process and this process for us to understand it must be widened in later videos we will look at the accounting cycle that will give us a clearer picture of accounting as a process so as we widen this process we identify the various elements that will be used in the accounts we identify the assets for example we identify the liabilities we identify the different revenue and we identify the expenditure so to speak and as we identify them we put them in classes we classify them accounting is a subject that it's it's all about organization an accountant is someone who is meticulous and is someone who is very detailed and organized and so as the accountant identify the various elements that goes into the accounts he will classify these elements into different categories after classifying it because an accountant is meticulous because he or she is organized then we must summarize them we must make it easier for him or her to understand before they do the measuring and the recording and after we measure and record i'm not giving uh examples using figures but i'm just breaking down the process then we must interpret we must tell someone or an institution what is this accounting saying what does the profit says about a company what does the profit says about the financial health of the company what does the profit say is this a company that i should buy shares in is this a company that i should invest in is this a company that as a bank manager or a loans officer i should lend money to and then last but by no means least is that we communicate this information in the form of reporting and so large company by laws or acts they're mandated by laws to publish their financial accounts on an annual basis and additionally they're asked to publish their financial accounts whenever they sell shares or the company goes public so to speak so you see accounting is something that it's it's a real world it's a real life scenario as we move on to our next slide why do we do accounts that's a big question well we do accounts for a number of reasons we do accounts to determine the financial strength the financial position of an entity it could be a sole trader it could be a partnership it could be a company it could be a limited liability company it could be a company that's on the stock market it could be a private company as well as it could be a public company but at the end of the day we do accounts we prepare accounts to determine to come up with to find out the financial position of a company or an entity we also prepare accounts to determine the net worth of the entity does this company values a million dollar does it value value a meager fifty thousand dollars does this company like the large conglomerates worldwide value billions of dollars so we prepare and so we do accounts to determine the net worth of the company 
individuals too have network because when we are seeking loans from financial institution the institution has pre-formatted accounts to determine our network when we subtract what we own from what we from what we owe then we have our network then Another object, objective of accounts is to determine the liquidity or the cash position of the entity. How much cash is in the business? And later on, we will discover, we will find out that cash does not equal to profit. Cash means the actual funds that's in the business and cash again can be broken up into two segments we can have simply put cash in hand that is cash that is in the business it could be in the cash kill it cash till it could be in a vault or it could also be cash at bank and so cash at bank can also be cash that we have in our current account it can be cash that we have in our savings account it can be cash that we have in our investment account so we need to determine the liquidity or the cash position of the business. Then we need to determine how much funds the entity owes and how much is owed to the entity. What's our liabilities? How much do we owe? And last but by no means least, we need to determine the state of the financial affairs at a particular time in the business. And in a nutshell, in summary, this is looking at our balance sheet or our statement of financial affairs at a particular time. Whereas the profit and loss of the income statement, which we will look at further on in, in later videos, look at the series, whereas, whereas it look at the series of transactions or the series of activities over a period of time usually one year the financial affairs look at the position of the business at a particular time we move on to our next slide and remember as we return to our definition our definition talks about identifying it talks about communicating and reporting information who are these users of information? Well, in a nutshell, the users of the information are the business owners, those who own the business. They use accounting information to make decisions about the business. Decision, should they, should they go on to produce this new product? Should they buy more of this product? Should they buy less of this product? Should they cut costs? Should they uh, have marketing plans to increase their revenue is this marketing plan is it is it an effective will it be an effective one will it be efficient so that more money will come into the business or will the business just be spending money and no money coming in whereas that would increase the the the, the net loss no we, we would not want that and so business owners use accounting information to make informed judgments and decisions. Shareholders too, they use information because these account information will help a shareholder to determine if they're supposed to buy more shares in a company, if they're supposed to sell. It, it helps them to make informed decisions as the accounting definition says. And then we go more internal and we look at the management and the board of directors for these companies they too use accounting information to make decisions about the company for example should they increase the salary of the employees should they seek a new supplier for a certain product that they're selling the accountants next they too use the financial information because they're the one that use this financial information to prepare accounts they prepare final accounts, they prepare cash flow statements, they prepare bank reconciliation statements, they prepare the balance sheet also. They, they, they use accounts, the accountants to do a number of things. They, they use a, a, the, the, the accounts to, 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 to make decisions also. And then the employees look, use financial or accounting information to make decisions. 
we use this information as employees to determine if we're supposed to work for a particular company. Is this company profitable? Will this company give me a bonus at the end of the year? Will this company give me a, an increase? Is this a company that I will be promoted to promoted to a position in the next five years or next 10 years? Is this a company where I will grow? Does this company offer uh, tuition reimbursement, for example? Does this company offer what we call in the business world fringe benefits? Or what are the fringe benefits that they offer? So the employees also utilize, along with the trade unions, utilize accounting information. As we talk about the large conglomerates, the potential investors and the public at large, they too need to know what is taking place in a business. So they too would want to use accounting information. In the previous slide, we talked about banks and financial institutions, they too need to use uh, uh, accounting information. When, when businesses apply for loans, the bank would need to see their accounting records to determine, to make a decision. Is this a company that I would want to lend my money to? Is this a company that, that, that is a profitable one? that can turn over funds that I would lend them to make a profit so that they'll be able to pay the loan. So, you know, we, we use this information in the financial sector to help make decisions. The government, you know, this on the slide, they're put at last, but by no means are they the least. The government, they too use accounting information to make decisions. They use this information to determine how much tax they will charge this company. As a matter of fact, once the company is a public listed company, by law, they're asked to report their accounting information. If it's not reported, this company is liable to be charged in the court of law. So while we're doing accounting, we need to know the theoretical part of accounting as we build a framework for later topics to come. Let us look, look at the slide. The next slide is very critical to accountants and to anyone studying accounting. And so to my online students, I pump this information that bookkeeping is different from accounting. According to Wood and Sangster 2005, page 34, it defines in a nutshell bookkeeping as the recording of accounting information. While accounting is the use of this information that is recorded by the bookkeepers, into a system, a system where we will calculate uh, things such as the, 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 the profit or the loss, a system in which we will prepare what is called the income statement, a system in which we will prepare the cash flow statement, we, we will prepare the bank reconciliation statement, we will prepare all of these various advanced accounting practices so that the information that the bookkeeper recorded and put in the system will be of use to us. Next slide. Our next slide is very critical to the foundation of accounting. The accounting equation. It's called the accounting equation because it equates elements using accounts. Assets must equal to capital plus liabilities. Or we could spin it another way. We could say assets must equal to liabilities plus capital. So we, so we need to know this accounting equation. This accounting equation is what we will later learn is used in topics such as the double entry system of accounts where the debit side must equal or balance to the credit side. It is also using the trial balance 
where the debit side must equal to the credit side. It is also used in the balance sheet where the debit side must equal to the credit side. And so I would normally tell my students that accounting is a system of opposites. Assets being on the opposite side, capital and liabilities being on the opposite side of assets. So accounting is a subject of opposites. And so we need to utilize our mathematical experience or if some of the students might not be mathematically inclined, they could study this knowledge base aspect of accounts that assets must equal to capital and liabilities. And if we need to find capital, we know that capital is equal to assets minus liabilities and liabilities is equal to assets plus capital. All right. Here's an example. If capital is $200,000 and liabilities is $50,000, find the value of the assets. This is a simple one. And so on to the next slides, I use a worksheet, A signifying assets equal to C signifying capital minus L, which means liability. So assets is equal to the $200,000 minus $50,000, that's simple calculation. So assets is equal to $150,000. But sometimes the examiner not only wants you to put down this answer, but he or she would want you to calculate or show your workings. Next slide. Our next slide defines assets, capital, and liabilities. And so simply put, uh, different books have different definitions and different uh, presenters will have different definition, different lectures, different teachers. But over the years, I have used this both as a student of accounts and as a teacher of accounts. Asset is anything that the business owns. And let us put it into a personal life. What I own, I might own furniture in my house. I might own a house. I might own a car. Anything that I own, I own a laptop computer. I own a cell phone. Those are my assets. For the business, it could be the motor vehicles, it could be the land, it could be the cash in hand, the cash of bank, whatever the business owns. It could even be money in an investment account. That is the company's assets. Then we look at liability. Liability, simply put, is anything that the business owes, anything that it owes. That's our liability. And some examples are the accounts payables, also called creditors, the loans, mortgages, all of these are liabilities. Then capital, also known as the owner's equity, is the money used to start the business or it is the money introduced in the business or not in this definition, but capital simply put is the net worth of the business. When we minus our liabilities from our assets, that is our capital. Let's move on. And so breaking down the accounting equation, we looked at assets. So now we need to further break down assets. So assets can be subdivided into two categories, fixed, also called non-current assets, these are assets that are used in the business over a relatively long period of time, such as the premises, such as the land, such as machinery, such as motor vehicle. These are assets that are used in the business over a long period of time. That's my definition. And then current assets are those that are used in the business for the daily operational activities in the business. So we think of things like stocks, also called inventories. We think of things like the accounts receivable, cash in hand, cash at the bank. All of these are our current assets. So we, when we're preparing our balance sheet, we need to 
uh, we call classify first and put into different categories the different or the various assets. All right. Just as how in accounting to get a clearer understanding, a clearer picture of accounting, we need to break down the assets into two sections. We also need to break down the liabilities into two sections. And so there are two categories long term liabilities. These are money owed by the business over a period of a year or, or you know over a period of a year example long-term liability example mortgages and if you go on the internet and you type in mortgage there's no mortgage that is owed for less than a year mortgages are normally 15 10 years 20 years 25 years and so on and so forth and then we look at the current liabilities we define current liabilities as those owed by the business over a period of a year or less and typical popular current liabilities both in the cxc and different levels of accounting or accounts payable and bank overdraft whereas a lot of companies try to avoid the bank overdraft but from time to time the bank overdraft is a facility that a company can use if and when they need to utilize it using a bank overdraft doesn't necessarily means that a company is making a loss it could mean that the company sees it as more profitable to apply this facility depending on the charges that the bank charge the interest rate rather than to use your own funds that it is in, in that is in investments so don't think of bank overdraft as a negative thing but if it's more profitable to pull the funds from investments and use it, then fine. The bank overdraft might be a, 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 a facility that can be used at your disposal very quick. You can reach it quick. Rather, sometimes to pull out your funds from investment might take a while, or you do what we call planning. I don't want to get into that. You plan before, you know you're going to need this fund, so you pull the funds from the investment account. It might take two, three days, but the bank overdraft facility, you can set it up and you can get it instantly if and when you need it. So let's move to the next slide. As we summarize this topic of introduction to accounts, uh, it is basically defining as we lay the groundwork for account, we need to build a foundation. We define accounts or accounting. Then we look at the objectives or the reason why we do accounts, because everything we do in life, we do for a reason. So to accounts, some students have complained that they don't see the reason why they do subjects uh, like accounts or maths, but we can apply it to our life. Some of us use it in our work. Not every work would use different maths topics. Not every work would use different accounting topics. We can use it in our personal life, as I said. And then we look at the users of accounting information, the bank, the government, investors, management, the accountant, you name it. Then it's always important to differentiate bookkeeping versus accounting. There's a difference between bookkeeping and accounting. So a bookkeeper definitely would have a lower salary than an accountant. Then we look at the accounting equation, which is the key to understanding this first topic that introduces us to accounts where the accounting equation is simply put assets equal to capital plus liabilities next slide our takeaway from this our first video is that one the theoretical part of accounts is equally important as the practical part because it lays what is called the foundation to understanding the subject of accounts also in answering short question in accounts it's always good to utilize references just as i use woods 2005 page 34 for example 
It's always good to utilize references in examinations. These are the way to go in the 21st century as we give our definitions, as we give answers, if we need to use them. And then always show your workings or calculations in answering questions of that nature. You attach a worksheet. If, if you're not able to attach a worksheet, always show workings on the past papers. This will help in the marks that you attain for that question. And as we go along, we will pull from the resources of past paper questions on each of the topics that we look at. And so we prepare for that. Definitely, I should have said it uh, from the beginning, accounts is a subject where you need to have your calculators at hand. You need to have a pencil, you need to have your pen, you need to have a ruler, of course, and you need to come with an open mind. It's not a challenging subject per se, but it is one that if we practice and study, we can be successful. Our next topic, which will come up in our next video, we hope to have two videos each week. One should be out on the weekend and the other one by midweek. So our next topics will be the double entry system of accounts and the balance sheet. Rather, it's an introduction to the balance sheet because there's some balance sheets that's very simple, very short, in length and there's some that are very detailed that includes adjustment and so i hope that you enjoyed this our first video i also hope too that you will hit that subscribe button i hope that you would benefit from this first video on accounting preparing those students for the csec examinations and i Hope and ask again that you not only hit the subscribe button, but you like and you share the videos. I hope that you have a very good afternoon until we meet again for our next class. Look out also for our maths videos. Look out also for videos on economics, preparing those students for CSEC. And then sometime in the near future, probably another two, three years from now, we will look out to hit the graduate and the undergrad platform on different courses. So we have big plans for this online platform. So hit the subscribe button. You can benefit in some way or another. And I hope that you like these videos. Have a very good evening.